lockdown for me. Obviously, I came back from Vegas and then I went to work and then they were like, hey, you were just traveling domestically. And I was like, yeah, I, I went to Vegas and, and whatnot. They're like, yeah, you have to you have to take 14 days off from work. So I was like, fuck it, dude. I went and saw Chappelle. Uh, Dave Chappelle was performing really? in town. Huh. Um, I was supposed to. Oh, and then while I was out in Vegas, I got to see two chains and shit like that. So I did a bunch of shows, hung out, got to see two chains, got to see Dave Chappelle. Um, and then the weekend beforehand, I did a bunch of shows. I played at McGillicuddy's, which is this uh, uh, Irish outdoor patio bar here in Milwaukee. Huge crowd for the bar crawl. And then I went and played the spot over at Jackalope and had a, another great packed crowd, which uh, after saying that now <laughs> with COVID, I just realized I was like, not a good thing. But at the same time, like I thought like, you know, if these were my last shows. Yeah. I was like, I'm real happy with it because they were yeah. amazing. I had great crowds. Everyone was a lot of fun. Was it kind of the same for you? Did you get to do a, a couple of shows before everything went into lockdown? Um, you, you know, honestly, it happened so quick. Like, fake, what was going to happen is when I got back from Vegas, I was like, I'm going to, like, not do anything for a few weeks. Because I'd done, like, quite a bit up until then. It was like, I, I don't know, like, the third week was Vegas. And I hadn't had a week off. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I need a little bit of a break. January had been busy. So I was planning on taking a break anyway. Mm -hmm. and then like almost immediately when we got back they were like yep everything's closed down and i'm like well i wasn't gonna do anything anyway so i mean it worked out for me it really did i didn't know it was gonna be for fucking one year but you know so are are things slowly coming back yeah into you being able to go out and tour yeah it's or it's weird because like some places you don't even notice it you know, but even when it was bad, you remember, like, we would go to some gas stations in the middle of fucking nowhere. No one was wearing a mask. No yeah. one give a shit. When it was in its day, you know, and it's still like that now. But then you go somewhere and you get caught out and they're like, where's your mask? And you're like, oh, we're still doing that shit, yeah. you know? And it's, it's weird, man. It is weird because there's different rules yeah, everywhere where you go. Everywhere you go, yeah. Because obviously you guys are out in the burbs uh, for these shows. Um, but here in Milwaukee, like, I live in the downtown area, so everything's super strict where it was like for a while there, you had to wear a mask. You had to be seated at the bar. You had all these yeah, fucked up yeah, rules yeah, that you had yeah. to follow. But it, then you go out to the burbs and it's no just in the Wild West. No, no, one, one, gives, no one gives a yeah. shit. People yeah. stare at you. If, you. if I go into a gas station to get a pack of cigarettes and I'm wearing a mask, the people out there are like, look at this fucking guy. What is he <laughs> Oh, big city over here with this mask. Yeah, you know that's what I exactly mean? Like, what it is. Like, like, I'll go out and I'll visit my. Uh, so my parents live out in the burbs, and it's one of those that like I go to. Like I'll stop at the gas station because gas is always cheaper out in the burbs than it is downtown, and I always fill up when I'm out there. And like I walked into the gas station, nobody. No, I'm the only one wearing a mask. Yeah, they don't yeah. care. Dude. Yeah. yeah, and they stare at you. They like, do. And they, the and they have the signs on the door still that says "must wear a mask," and no one's <laughs> and no, no one's, one's doing it. it. Yeah. yeah, it's hilarious. But uh, but yeah, it's 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 the wild west in certain places, and then like the the closer you get to a metropolis or a bigger city, it's one of those where the rules get real strict yeah. then, and it gets it gets real dicey. Is it ever can... going away? You think a lot. I don't know. I, you know what? Here's the thing. Where, where is the line that gets drawn? At what point do you just go, okay, you know, enough of people have been yeah, vaccinated, enough people have yeah. had it. Yeah. Um, we can, we can kind of do away with this. And then even then, when you have the permission to not wear it, how many people are still just going to be walking around with yeah. it? I mean, personally, this eight by 10 100%. cover a half of it. My, my yeah. hotness goes up. If yeah. I'm just, yeah, <laughs> I'm just here up. I'm like what's up ladies. <laughs> and with that, hot, that, that big eye energy. That's yeah. right. I'm socially conscious. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I, I don't know. And and it, like I said, it, it's goofy because everywhere you go, it, it's different rules. How is it in Austin? Austin's real bad. You, you know, like, so I was in San Antonio like about a month ago, driving down and I stopped in Austin to get gas. And it was like, it was like how it was everywhere last year in the, in the height of it. Mm -hmm. everybody stood apart, you know, nobody talking, got to have a mask. I took my, ga my my mask off at the gas pump and people looked at me like I was fucking suicidal. Like, what is he doing? I'm like, there's nothing. Everyone's like, oh my God. He's done it. Fucking people from Dallas. Like, <laughs> Filled up my car. <laughs> but um, it was just crazy, man. And yeah. then an hour down the road, you know, everything's back to normal. Yeah. 
it, you know? it, it's it's insane. And it's, it's frustrating. It's very hard doing blow with a fucking mask. <laughs> <laughs> Because you gotta like cover like yeah. one part down. <laughs> I got a so somebody at one point, <laughs> someone at one point had given me a mask where there's a straw hole yeah, I've sewn that, into yeah, it, yeah. and I was like, "What the fuck is a defeat the purpose?" Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was like, "There's a hole in this fucking mask." You know what? I'll give it to you. You can put it over your nose. <laughs> I get a kick out of in the in the Dallas area. I get a kick out of all the you know up and coming comics that I do open mics with or whatever. Like, man, can you believe that guy doesn't wear a fucking mask? Anyways, pass the blunt. Like Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, like, We're doing sharing the blowing the, blowing the bathroom bathroom together. Yeah, yeah. The dollar bill that's been shared and by then, nine people. Yeah, and you're fucking, and you're talking fucking shit. worried about COVID? Yeah. <laughs> like, so that is the weird thing. Do, you know, even moving forward, do you still share joints with people? Like that's always I been, don't give a shit. Yeah. We were in we were in Colorado. This was all oh, fucking yeah attempt to be like safe with the covid mm -hmm. and we're staying at his friend's house and then we it turns out his friend has it so we're like oh shit there were four people three people living in that house all three of them tested positive yeah. the day we left yeah it's like well sweet, well but one you. of them had it while we were there right mm -hmm. so we were like you gotta stay in your room motherfucker you remember that yeah and then we got bored and we we're like man i'm gonna really do some weed though and he's the only guy that's got it <laughs> <laughs> and we're like Hey, can we have some of that weed? And he passed us the pipe. And I was like, what are we? Now go back to your room. <laughs> fucking idiot. And we're like, there you go. Like, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> we just smoked from his pipe. <laughs> Like, uh, no, we didn't get it. There's something to this cigarette thing. If you yeah. smoke, it's they say if you smoke cigarettes, you're less likely to get it, which is you know the opposite of why I started smoking cigarettes. Yeah. You know, I wasn't trying to do it to be healthy, but there's something to that. I mean. We've had two experiences, two different households where they were all testing positive and we didn't get it. We didn't get nothing, but we're comics, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Our bodies are designed for this shit. <laughs> you got that yeah. iron immune system. Dude, we've done so many fucking parties and put so much shit in our bodies covid <laughs> the fuck out of covid it. covid got in there and was just like where yeah. oh, turn the around, fuck turn around. i went back Get out, the fuck out of here. i am the vaccine bitch <laughs> it took its bat wings and flew right the fuck back out <laughs> will smith in fucking i am legend yeah, <laughs> that's <it> your blood <laughs> <laughs> oh hell man um where else was i going with this we were talking about something right before this uh smoking weed oh i remember what i was gonna say so you were talking about how cigarettes had you were like cigarettes are supposed to help you not get covid so there's really studies yeah, yeah so there was a study out of canada that said like if you're smoking weed like it actually combats yeah. in your system so when I, I had it last summer uh back in july i you met my girlfriend yeah on thursday she was the one that gave it to me Huh. Like one of our first dates hanging out, she gives me fucking COVID. So like the next couple of days later, she she's got that awkward phone call where she's like, "Hey Parker, um, so you gotta go get tested." <laughs> and I was like, "Tested?" I was like, "What'd you give me?" And she's like, "COVID." I was like, "Yeah, oh, thank, thank God." God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Oh, saw my bachelor days just fucking flash right before me. I don't know about you guys, I like my sex life like a like I like my cookie dough. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh, that's and soft, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but uh, but yeah, I, I got scared, and then uh, when I found out that we both had it, I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna come pick you up. And I, I picked her up, and she came over like three cases of white claws in a duffel bag, and she was crushing white claws the entire time. And I was eating edibles and crushing day quill, we we're up just like watching fights and shit like that. So huh. it was absolutely uh, it was that's a good way time, to do it, man. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Yeah. and then we I want to get it just to be done with it. I just want to get it and be like, you probably oh, I've already had, had it. it. Though. Yeah. You probably had Look, man, we, not we were it. smoking off a pen that the guy had. And I tested, it. though. After that happened, my brother came How'd you not get that? I mean, unless he didn't have it and they fucked it up. Yeah. I'm close enough with my grandparents that when I got home, I was, she was like, you want to come over for dinner? I was like, no, I need to get tested. Yeah. I was just at a house where people have it. And you're like 85,000 years old, so I don't want to give it to you, yeah. you know? Uh, I tested and did not have it. And I tested crazy. a solid four days after that. How exposure. we avoided that is yeah. unbelievable. You probably had it. You're probably asymptomatic and didn't even, didn't even note it. 
Maybe. No, no Didn't it. show up on the test, though, even if that's the case. Did you test for your antibodies, or did you just no, test No, I did the, the, what is that called? The, not the antibody test. I wish I did to the see The nostril I, one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's just, they, like, they test to see if you have it at the time of the test. Yeah. I had that one, and I, I, told, I told the military guy, I was like, I'm like, yo, man, I got a bad reflex for this. I'm like, I'm just going to sit on my hands. <laughs> and it was just one of those that just tickle the back of your fucking brain. And I was like, ah, oh, fucking hurts. shit suck. It didn't hurt. It's just really uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. I'd put it up there with getting tested for chlamydia where they put the fucking up Q-tip. Fucking... Yeah. No bueno. I've never had that. Did you say the military guy? Yeah. So we, so there's a couple of tests that you could have done Uh so last summer, it was those tests were kind of hard to come by. So the best way to go about it was you went through the military. So they had a couple of areas in Milwaukee where you could go in and you literally just waited in line in your car. And then you would pull up to a tent and a serviceman would come up and just swab the back of your nose. It hits different when he's wearing camouflage, raping your nose. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but, and then you're it like, gets a little bit more conspiracy. Yeah. Like, the and hell? then after that, you're like, thank you for your service. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so, and then they called and then they had the contact tracer. It was like, what have you been up to? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I've been drinking and smoking a lot of weed. So your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was like, I got it from my girls. So. Your best bet is talking to her first. Can when you I, get it like twice? Though? Can you get it twice? Yeah, or? people have because of their uh, mutations. Mm-hmm. That's why I say I feel like this is going to be the flu from now on. Every year, there's going to be yeah. new vaccine. Yeah. Uh, did you get your vaccine this year? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I never got the flu shot to begin with, but they did say uh, the other day that like whether it's the Johnson & Johnson or whatever yeah, they vaccine. Yeah, the clots. Yeah, whatever, whatever one that you're taking that they're going to say that you should get one every year as a booster to keep your uh, to keep your immune system up from it. And I'm just like, yeah, all right. So COVID's here and the flu's completely gone. There's like a thousand cases yeah, of flu what is that? worldwide or uh, throughout the U.S. Oh, shut the fuck up. Really, Scott? Shout to Scott Cron. All right. We might have to cut this one a little short. Um, all right. That reminds me. So you guys are uh, you guys are performing tonight at the Hideaway again out in Oconomowoc. Is that Oconomowoc? I don't even know how you say it, dude. Yeah, Oconomowoc. Oconomowoc. It's it's an Indian name. (laughs) (laughs) Have you seen the fucking address for the place? Oh, it's like is it one of those North C nine four eight two seven seven six five? Yeah, it's coordinates basically. Yeah. 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 When you get past when you get outside the city, my my dad has the same one. He's he's out in Menominee Falls, and it's a North address and a west address and it's they're they're just crazy um yeah that's whenever you get out to those way north suburbs you go from address to to, coordinates you know we put in when we uh when we came in november you remember you put the address yeah we went to the wrong hideaway it it, it was a popular house dude it was a house that said hideaway but like a speakeasy shit or something yeah in the middle of nowhere probably an hour and a half away from here do you guys at least like go in and like have a beer? You're like, no, Fuck, we're man. right here. <laughs> I, mean, like, I actually banjo, remember recommending that, but he was pissed off that I put it in the wrong one. I was like, I've never been here before. Fuck you. Do you have we, beer? How it was about like drugs? middle of fucking nowhere. <laughs> and we had driven from Colorado Springs. We did Colorado Springs right before that, like five shows there, and then and then we Indiana drove fucking what is it, twelve hours from there or whatever. And on the twelfth hour, we get to this fucking place. That yeah, isn't the right place. An hour and a half to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty gloomy, that one. So as, was that recent? Oh, so that was back in November. November yeah. yeah. Okay. And then we were going to come back and do New Year's, and that fell through. Mm-hmm. And then we were going to come back in fucking and the February. Ice storm happened. Yeah, and the you guys, ice storm happened. Yeah, we were, we were trying to get you guys on yeah. back in February. It, it just kept going on and on and on and on. And then so eventually we got this one. This day's changed a few times, so I'm just fucking glad we got out here you know yeah and now is this gonna be a, like a regular thing that you guys are coming out here now or uh probably i mean they do a lot of stuff at that bar yeah so well, you they, know, they book bands they book djs and yeah stuff like yeah, yeah. And they have like a hypnotist and then they've had other comics there and stuff so <clears throat> i would assume they're gonna keep doing it yeah during the yeah. summer that place just prints money it is just it's fucking insane isn't it? the amount of people that come th- and, it, and the thing is is that it's a good size venue but at the same time it's not huge right but 
the intimate sport. Yeah, is a good the, word for it. But there's a ton of, like, Dude, there'll be a couple so hundred people. Yeah. So you'll have 30, 40, 50 people on the inside, but you'll have a couple hundred people outside hanging Jeez. out on that patio, Jeez. drinking. I want to come back during the summer. Bro. Oh, it's the stories mental. I've heard. I'll tell yeah. you what, come back during the summer just to hang out. Yeah. Like, take a room, crash out or crash on the couch, whatever you want to do. Come hang out for, like, a weekend in the summer. When we'll go party out there. The stories I've heard. Yeah, oh, I'm, down. Crazy, I'm down. Crazy, did you guys meet the kid that rides that bike into the lake no, every night? No. The last time I was out there. So the last time I was out there. It's his thing. <laughs> <laughs> so Callie was kind of shopping around uh, different places she wanted to work. She was looking at getting out of her the place that she was working at, and she bartends. So Craig and Scott were like, well, bring her out. She knows the area and so on and so forth. We want to meet her. And so like we stuck around, had a couple of drinks. We're hanging out with Craig and Scott. And they're like, did you meet so-and-so? And I'm like, no. I'm like, what's up, man? Nice to meet you. And he's like, you want to see me ride my bike into the lake? And I was like, <laughs> yep. I was like, let's do this. <laughs> I was like, hold on. Let me get a drink. <laughs> Grabbed a drink. Sure shit, this dude is hammed up, strips down to his fucking underwear, rides the bike right into the lake. Wow. For no good goddamn reason. For just no reason. And he was just like, hey. I mean, I got to say, I've done And that's it. And that, and that was it. Yeah. And then. It's probably the same dude that sat in a fire for five grand. You know what I mean? I don't even. I don't <laughs> think Dano lives here anymore. By the way, the end of that. St- Did we talk about that on here yet? No. We talk no, we talked yeah, about that yeah. in the pre-interview. Yeah. So <laughs> we should pull that video up here. Let me Did pull you get it? it? Like, I, I, I have the link on here. I'll pull it up. Um. Brandon, do you want me to adjust the camera at all so that this is facing towards the TV? Or uh, do you want me to... S- I can't download... I don't have enough time to download this and send it over to you. Probably throw it up on the... Sh- oh, I see what you mean. Do you have a good angle where you can see that, Brandon? God. This was after partying all fucking night. So to, to set the stage for this... I can finally pick my nose. A bunch of years ago... Uh, <laughs> Steven, we had you do one of the anniversary parties. Yeah. And I can't remember who we had performing. Was it, was this when Steve was there or was that like a separate no, event? No, it wasn't Steve. It was someone else. It was someone big. It was a big deal. It was like, was that know. when we had, oh, wait, wait, wait. I think that's when we had Chuck Liddell, right? It might have been. Yeah. So I think it was Chuck Liddell. And then that was the night that, like, so Matt Mira, who's a, who was a BMX rider and, and, and shit like that did a bunch of ESPN sports or uh, those extreme sports. Um, he's there and he's partying with all of us and Chuck Liddell and he doesn't want to leave. And he's like, yo, someone needs to talk to my wife and tell her that I'm going to make it to my flight. And I was like, all right, man. I was like, give me your phone. I was like, Hey, Mrs. Mira, how's it going? I was like, this is Parker. And she's like, my husband needs to be on this flight at 7 a.m. He needs to come home. I was like, look, I was like, I've already assigned an assistant to handle it. We're going to put him in an SUV right at 6 a.m. We're going to get him to the airport. He's really close to it. I was like, we're going to get him out of here. By the way, Chuck Liddell and his girlfriend says, hi, everything will be handled. And she was just like, okay, what was your name again? I was like, all right, talk to you later. <laughs> I turned around the mat. I was like, you ain't making that flight, bro. <laughs> I was like, me, you, Chuck, we're going to finish this bottle of uh, Jameson, and we're going to do some wild-ass shit. Speaking of wild-ass shit, so what we ended up doing is we got drunk, and we thought it would be hilarious if our good friend Dano would, uh, what do you need? I was going to turn that to the too. Oh, Randon, go ahead. Um, So we needed, we, uh, we decided that we were like, hey, our good friend Dano, he's going to sit in this fire. Well, the story, you remember what? They wanted me to do the flaming arsehole. You, you remember the toilet thing that I did? No, no, no. The no. toilet paper thing. Have you not seen that? No, I don't think I have. The, the amazing shot where I set toilet paper on fire with my arse. you not seen that? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. So, yeah, so you do the, like, yeah, you yeah. roll it up into, like, a little rose and then. No, no, no. There's, like, it's on um, YouTube where you get a piece of toilet. It's called the, um, what is it called? The amazing shot on YouTube. Okay. And you get a, a piece of toilet paper, you make it the length of your leg, and you get a beer, you drop your pants, you put the top of it in between your butt cheeks, right? And then you set fire to it, <laughs> and you got to drink the beer before it burns your ass. Right? <laughs> Have you not seen that? <laughs> we've we've before tough- we watch this, you got to watch that, man. We, we've done tough man shots together, uh-huh. which, by the way, if you're unfamiliar with what a tough man shot is, is so what you do is, is you take a lime, and you squirt it in your eye, and then you take a line of salt, and you snort it, 
and the relief comes from when you do the shot of tequila. <laughs> which at that point, is fucking irrelevant. <laughs> which is, at, that, at that point, you're just you like... You tell your tough man story. The what? shot that you did, somebody had you do a shot in front of a cop. The, the, the tough man. Oh, yeah, story. yeah, yeah. We'll get to that. Yeah, yeah. But I want you to, like, see if you can look up uh, Steve Hurst, amazing shot. I can't okay. believe you've not seen this. No, dude. I've never seen this, dude. All right, man. So Steve. Oh, IR. Oh, here you are. Yeah. All right, let's uh right at the top. Boom. Yeah, well, check this shit out. Ran in uh I am so drunk at this point <laughs> after a show. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say Rizzle? I'm fucking hammered. You were drinking with Snoop, weren't you? Yeah. Time out. Did he put the? Did he put? Are you put it up your own butt? Oh, yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, what? What? <laughs> What's this shit, dude? I can smell the burnt hair. <laughs> <laughs> that flame was fucking huge, bro. <laughs> Dude, so after that, right, I'm, I didn't realize how badly burnt it was. I'm like, fuck, I'm going to have to go to the hospital. Because, I mean, it was bad. Uh -huh. So Nathan, I take Nathan with me. And like, this is, this is just like, this is what an idiot I am when I'm drunk. I'm like, Nathan, man, it's really bad. Look at it, dude. And he's like, I'm not looking. I'm like, just look, dude, it's fucked up. I'm not looking. I go, just look. And he looks and I go, ha, you're gay. And he was like, <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, you're such an idiot, dude. So we get to the hospital and I walk and I'm fucking drunk, you know, and I walk in and she's like, can I help you? I'm like, can you fix this? And they were like fucking kids in there and shit. And they're like, Get him his own room. So <laughs> I'm in this fucking room and I'm lying on my belly with my butt hanging out, right? And this fucking doctor walks in and he goes, so what happened? And I go, uh, I put toilet paper up my butt and set fire to it. And he goes, you're an idiot. And just left, right? And just fucking walked out. Nobody came in to help me after that. So I fucking took my socks off and emptied the fucking shelves, like what was in there, like medicine and shit. And off I fucking went. Dude. Nobody came to fucking help me, dude. But I still have a scar on my ass that looks like fucking Italy. And it was so bad. Like it was, it didn't heal for like three months. Jesus. Right? So this, what we were about to get to, John said to me, with this, with this next video, John said, why don't you do the Flaming Arsehole shot, the amazing shot? And I was like, you're out of your fucking mind. I'm not doing that. I've already got scars from it. You know, I'm not doing that. And so then we got on to, well, let's get Dino to sit in the fucking fire. Dano. Yeah. Dano. All right, you guys ready for this? So to set this, this is Jade Simone St. Clair. This is Dano, the bartender. Josh, the midget. Uh, and I think the rest of the management staff. That was owners, that the porn star or something. 
Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that was the girl. I've I've done a bunch of stuff with her. Uh, with Playboy TV with tour dates and shit like that. She was cool as shit. She actually works now with um, Piff the Magic Dragon, the yeah, yeah, yeah. comedian yeah, yeah. Yeah. musician. They have their own show. Actually, I caught their show when I was out there right before I saw you. So huh. the first night I was out there, I caught their show, hung out, and uh, got to catch up with her, got to meet him. He's great. Um, she was really cool. Yeah, and she's hilarious, too. Yeah. She writes a ton of material for, yeah. between the both of them. Um, we're going to start this video. Dude, that flame, that thing was going all night, too. There you are. Yeah, stood next to the midget. Yeah. You look tall as hell. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Famous last words. <laughs> he was serious when he said it as well. Yeah. That's a long oh. five count. Yeah, he didn't count that like real seconds. <laughs> that was eight seconds, to be honest. Dude. That's Michael Cho over there. Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. Dude, he was in some fucking pain. At I first, know. he wasn't feeling anything. And then all of a sudden. And then. And yeah. then, and then, like, once he started realizing that, like, his ass was blistering up, he was like, oh, I yeah. fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> he had a, at the end of that, he had second degree burns, and we sent him home. We put together, like, a, a bag of ice to put down his, yeah. in his seat. And I think he drove himself to the hospital after we were all partying that yeah. morning. Well, did um, did we tell him what happened as well? In addition to that, with the midget. Oh shit, dude, Matt. So 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 Josh. <laughs> Just when it couldn't get any worse. <laughs> I don't think we. So I'm kind of glad we didn't film this because it was one of those. It was completely. Somebody did. You know, I, there is a video of it somewhere, but I don't know who's got it. Somebody. You know what? I can hit up the staff. Some of these guys yeah. don't work for us anymore, but I can hit up most of the staff and figure out. I know most of most of, mostly everyone that was there that night. So the kicker of this, Steve, I'm going to let you jump in on this story. Go ahead and... All right, so, you know, the uh, his butt starts to blister. And one of them, like, a really big blister. And I think it was John that came up with the idea. <laughs> he said to the little person, <laughs> I don't know why he picked him, but he goes, I'll give you, what was it, $700? 700, 700 bucks. To bite the blister and suck the puss out. Oh. And I was like, there's no fucking way. And the midget was like, I'll do it, but I need a Sprite. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, he, the there's chaser, no the fucking way he's going to do Dude, the blister was like that. Ugh. I mean, it was like a little, it was like fucking that, right? Yeah. And it was getting bigger and bigger. And this, I'll, this midget went up and punk. <laughs> 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 fucking chugged it and did the sprite and everybody was like <laughs> <laughs> it was fuck I was dry heaving for like 10 minutes I was like, <laughs> the midget oh like my oh my god that was fucking nasty I'm like what did you expect yeah. motherfucker <laughs> you just be good. drank puss out of someone's ass dude <laughs> he probably hasn't even fucking showered either he worked a whole shift he's sweaty and he did it for 700 700 fucking dollars Fuck. bit a Blister this big and suck the puss out mm. and shot it with fucking Sprite. Yeah, that, that's that's test. what we used to do though, that's, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like when I used to come up with stupid shit like that. And then uh, <laughs> nowadays we don't do that shit because we, we assumed it's probably going to get us canceled for whatever the fuck yeah. we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and shit like that used to get me hired though, innit? Yeah. Like Your people were, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that was, that was one of the. And, and what I guess what people don't realize as well is we'd been fucking partying all night. That yeah. was eight o'clock in the morning. We of had us drinking and partying. And shit. Yeah, so oh, I it was think the next morning. Yeah. yeah, so we so we set up that that anniversary party, and whenever Jade's around, I always end up co-hosting whatever event she's doing, and then it's usually me DJing as well. So I played probably a two-hour set, plus was hosting on the mic, talking to people, doing shit in front of the camera, and then we got done at bar time, and all of us went to Ferraro's house from like. 2 30 in the morning, 3 in the morning. Yeah. And that's probably 
eight, nine in the morning yeah. of us hanging out on like a November morning, yeah. Yeah. drinking outside. And then we kept going after this. So oh, yeah. we convinced the midget or excuse me, the little person to bite the blister <laughs> off of Dano's ass yeah. like an hour or two later where it was like, oh, look at the size of that blister. What's that <laughs> worth to you? Dude, I and couldn't it, believe he fucking, I was like, you nasty little fucker. When, when he said, you know? wait, let me get a, I thought for sure he was going to ask for more money. When yeah. he says Sprite, I was like, what the fuck is, <laughs> I tell you, you man, have shit for fucking negotiation skills. When I saw him do it, I couldn't fucking believe he was doing it. I'm like, this motherfucker must be so broke. For $700, you're going to suck it's to the point where the guy what? that offered the money is probably like, shit, I probably could have got him for 50. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. John would have done it if he could have fucking done it. He'd have probably yeah. done it for 200 as well. But, yeah, that was the nastiest thing I ever fucking saw, man. I mean, I was really dry heaving. Yeah. I was legitimately going, <laughs> <laughs> like three or four people were fucking throwing up. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fucking midgets like, oh, my God. God, that was fucking horrible. Give me some Sprite. Like, the girls that were hanging out, there was a couple of them that were throwing up in John's bushes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't fucking... Be- and you know, it's crazy. Like, I tell him stories like this. And I'm sure people are like, what the fuck ever. But you were there. You yeah. Know? It's like, yeah. You, you know, it, it's true. It's, it's fucking robbery. crazy, but it really happened. So like part, part of the reason I've, I've, I started the podcast was because of the fact that like, there's stories like this that exist where I'm around for them and stuff like that. And you tell them to normal people and they're like, that didn't fucking happen. They don't believe you. Yeah. yeah. Like I was telling a uh, completely unrelated topic. I was telling the story about how a bunch of us, it was bouncers and, and a couple other people. We were up at a strip club in like Northern Wisconsin and we had an issue with one of their bouncers and we just went, fuck it. And we beat the shit out of the entire staff and left. And people were like, didn't happen. I go, no, it, it happened. And that story will eventually be covered on this fucking podcast. Or we turn around and we go, yeah, we paid a little person 700 bucks to bite a blister off of a yeah. guy's ass. Yeah. Who we had to sit in a fire pit yeah. for five grand. Uh, yeah. All this stuff where, where you tell people these stories and they're like, did that really fucking happen? Or these are my common stories that I tell at parties and shit like that. And people are like, what the fuck do you do? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, and, and I, I try to, like, I feel like stuff like this for a period of time in my life was just normal. Yeah. Like, this is what everyone does at their parties. Like, yeah. of course, you get someone to do some wild ass shit and stuff like that. And people are like, wait, you do what at parties? <laughs> I was like, well, we ah, drink till 10 in the morning. Uh, <laughs> Set people on fire. Set people you on know, fire. You know what I did last time? I was there? Last time, Joke was over. The last fucking weekend it was open. This is my idiot thing I did that week, oh, which no. is not as bad as that. But I was like, you know, I was fucking drunk. And I go, hey, let's do a, um, let's do like a, a shot, right? Where I'm going to, I'm going to put seven shot glasses out because there's seven of us. Mm-hmm. Six of them are going to have Jägermeister. One of them is going to have Windex, right? <laughs> and a little bit of Jäger, but you can't tell, right? Oh, I'm like, yeah. do you guys want to do it? And, and they were like, yeah. And I was like, really? <laughs> They're like, yeah. So I'm like, all right. So I fucking make the shots and like, you know, I, I don't know which one it is and I mix them up and I go, all right, just to show you that I'm not a fucking pussy, I go first. And I get a shot. Boom. I'm like, motherfucker, it was Windex. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, my tongue's swelling out, man. It's like kind of fucking scared me for like five minutes because my mouth was like weird and shit. And they were like, are you going to be okay sipping that fucking Jaeger? I was like... Fuck you. I know why you're sipping it. There's nothing in it. But I was the first one. And like, it just, my mouth just went. Mm. I fucking couldn't speak right and shit. And I was like, I might die, man. Like, Hold on, I'm going to reach across for a second. Is it not? I don't know if this makes a difference because it's, it's a powered mic. Okay. I don't, I don't think. just came on it. Oh, did it just go out? There we go. So I don't think it makes a difference because that mic is powered through the XLR, but just just in case, just I'm going to make sure it's yeah. uh, it's plugged in. When I go back, I'll actually just double check and make sure the audio came through. If worse comes to worse, you're near that mic. I can just up your audio through that. Cool. I got real technical for no good goddamn reason. It's <laughs> good here, though. Dude. Yeah. You killed it out here, man. Well, but yeah, so. Dude, that's a perfect lead into the tough man shot that you did. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I learned the tough man shot. At Jokers, if you remember. You remember that crazy bouncer, Rich? He, no joke, he's in jail right now. Is he really? <laughs> Man, he's, he's, he's fucking cool as shit. And he goes, I got a shot for you. 
And I'm like, what? And I saw him do it, and I'm like, oh, fuck, I wish I hadn't seen that, because now I'm going to do it. We you used to do I mean? those like, all, the all the fucking time. For no, and it was just one of those that we would be out, and we'd be like, let's do a tough man shot. Yep. Let's do a tough man shot. There was no rhyme, reason. It's not like girls were impressed by it. No. It's not like people were like, let me see you do it. We just pulled it out, and people were like, no. what the fuck is wrong no with No one wanted to do it. People were just like, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then, man, go, man. So once again, stupid. you snort a line of salt, you crush a lime in your eye, and then you drink a shot of tequila. Yeah. And then we upped it to the point where we started taking the lime and breaking it on the bridge of our nose so it went into both eyes because that was yeah. the even tougher yeah. version of doing it. I've done both nostrils, both fucking eyes. You can only um, go tough from here, yeah. Oh, it's such a fucking retarded shot. Yeah. I was in Odessa, right, and the club was kind of ghetto. So they had these cops there, right? Gangster shit there. Mm -hmm. And so they had two cops in there. My friend, um, Rob Jenkins, a really good friend of mine, he owned the club. And I said to him, hey, uh, let's do a fucking tough man shot on stage. He's like, oh, man, come on, dude. You don't want to fucking do that shit. I'm like, come on, man. There's like fucking 300 people here. I'll give you a shout out. I mean, come on, dude. Like, fucking stop being a girl. And Rob's a little crazy. He's like, man, fuck it. I'll do it. But <laughs> what I didn't tell him is I'd got a bunch of cocaine and I put it into a salt shaker, right? <laughs> so it looked like salt was in it, right? And so I get it all set up. And I've got it. And there's two cops there. And I'm like, yeah, yo, it looks like blow. And they're like, yeah, fuck you. Like, <laughs> so I fucking line it up, right? And Rob comes on stage in front of 300 people and two cops, right? <laughs> and, and I go, I'll go first. Fuck it. And I did it. I was like, it ain't that bad. And fucking <laughs> Rob goes, he goes, what the fuck? I go, shut up! He goes, God damn, dude. <laughs> and he, goes, he looks at me, he's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> dude, we just snorted a line of blow in front of two <laughs> And they were fucking laughing. They're like, these motherfuckers are crazy. <laughs> That's shut up. <laughs> His fucking face. Is, yeah, it was fucking oh. great, man. Oh. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Yeah. I can't breathe right after that. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking classic, dude. <laughs> Everyone was like, man, that was so funny. I'm like, you don't even know half the fucking story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, dude. Uh, so there was... Fuck, I've lost my fucking notes now. Holy shit, dude. Well, that kind of... <laughs> how the fuck do you... How the hell do we follow that up? <laughs> 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 so this other time... <laughs> Holy shit. I think the the only other way we can probably top that is I can kind of lead into um, me getting banned from the win for life. So when I was out in oh, Vegas. Oh, last time you in Vegas. Yeah. So the last You're time. You're just so stupid. When you told me this, I was like, what the fuck do you expect? Like, I was like, well, honesty is the best. I, listen, I was tripping my balls off, so I thought I should be honest. I was like, your golden aura around you tells me that you're probably very understanding not the case so <clears throat> one of the nights that i'm out there steve is performing with kid from kid and play um what's kid's real name again chris chris um got to meet him he was great um by the way i love the fact that that dude sings like everything know, right? that's wait how'd you meet him anyway i, I uh um, <clears throat> when i first started doing comedy i i was a mc and i was and i got a show with billy d washington mm -hmm. two-man show and after that show, I'd only been doing comedy like six months. After that show, Billy comes up to me and he goes, hey, um, I, I, I'm doing this uh, comedy house party tour with Kid Reed. And I didn't know who he was, <clears throat> right? And he goes, uh, we're looking for someone in the middle. He goes, but we want something a little different. And he goes, and you're English. And um, he goes, would you be interested in doing it? Well, of course, I'm going to fucking say, yeah. You yeah. Know, I'm like, absolutely. <clears throat> and he goes, well, he said, this is what I'm going to call him and we'll set up a date and then you come up there and you do, you know, like 20 minutes in the middle. And if you and Chris get along and it goes with a show, we'll take you on the fucking road. So I was like, all right. So the gig was in Columbia, Missouri. And as soon as I met Chris, we kind of just clicked, you know, like he's just a fucking cool guy. So we did the shows and the shows were fucking great. And after that, it was me, Kid, and Billy just fucking traveling around. Awesome. Uh -huh. and, that, and that's been since the beginning of your career then? That, yeah, that's like, that was six months into doing stand-up. And then I did that for a few years. I can't even remember how many, but like, 
uh, quite a time. And it was so much fucking fun. Because every show was sold out. Yeah. You know, and Kid and Billy were just so good. And just good with me as well. You know, I like, I, they, they taught me a lot and they treated me well. And, you know, we were fucking crazy, man. You know, it was like, we, it wasn't even like we were working. It, it, we just, it was just an excuse for us to get together and, you know, get fucking drunk. And yeah. we had some of the best fucking times. It was it, by far the best times I've ever had on the road. But, that, and, but I stayed in touch with Chris <clears throat> and we're still really good friends. Whenever he's in like Fort Worth or whatever, like he'll, he'll usually just come stay with me. Mm -hmm. You know, he can stay at a nice hotel. He stays at my fucking place. But, you know, because we just go back like that. Yeah. And over that amount of years, you know, he's seen me go through fucking divorces, have kids. And I have, you know, I was in his wedding and shit. Like, it's like 20 years strong now. So, but he's a really good guy. Chris is a fucking great guy, man. Um, and he's doing well again, which is fucking awesome. So, yeah, he's a, he's a badass. He's a badass. So, now that we've kind of set this up, we're hanging out. Uh after one of your shows and I finally turn around to you and you're like, I was like, Hey, I was like, I have mushrooms. And you're like, why the fuck didn't you say that from the word go? <laughs> <laughs> so I hand, I hand some out to everyone and we proceed to just kind of roam around the hotel and Fremont area. And I remember at one point, like I was just, it's raining out and I'm staring up at the lights on that big screen on Fremont and I'm watching like everything go by and I'm like, this is the coolest shit I've ever seen in my fucking life. And I'm just like completely just hitting like my peak as far as mushrooms go. <clears throat> At some point, these guys are all like, oh, we're going to take off. We're going to go to bed. And I was like, well, fuck. I was like, I'm still kind of like, I'm ready to go still. It's it's pretty early. I think you had a show the next day or, yeah, or yeah, something, something that you had going like, on. Yeah. And I was like, all right. So I like, I look up and it's, I think it's like two in the morning. I was like, you know, most nightclubs are open till 4 a.m. So I look up and I see that Excess has Dylan Francis playing there. And I was like, well, fuck it. I'm like, I haven't seen Dylan Francis in forever. I'm going to go to this show. So I hop an Uber, get over there, so on and so forth. And I get up to the front door and I was like, hey, I was like, is there a cover? And they're like, yeah, 75 bucks. I was like, whatever, dude. I was like, I'm going to catch Dylan Francis. He, they're like, he's playing for like another hour and a half. I was like, yeah, I'll catch some good sets, shit, whatever. Yeah. Like, we need you to empty out your pockets. And I was like, oh, excuse me for one second. I have to throw some some shit out really quick. I have, like, receipts and whatever. And they're like, all right, cool. Um, And he goes, wait, stop. And I was like, what's going on? He's like, what do you have in your hand? I was like, aspirin. <laughs> he's like, can you open that, please? Because it was in, a, in an aspirin bottle. And I was like, open it up. And he's like, where are these? I was like, multivitamins. He's like, oh, okay. Take one. I was like. <laughs> I've already had my supplements for the day, sir. <laughs> I might die. I was like, no mas. I tried to overdose on vitamin B. <laughs> so, and he was like, so what are they really? I was like, it's like, well, you have a good aura about you because I was just kind of seeing rings around everybody at that point. And uh, I was like, they're mushrooms. I was like, if you'd like, you can keep them or I can throw them out. He was like, all right, just hang tight. I thought he was just going to be like, cool, we're going to throw these out. Go pay the cover. You can go inside. Nope. There has security came over and went, uh, excuse me, Mr. Parker, is it? Uh, we need you to leave our property immediately. Um, you brought illegal substances onto the grounds. I was like, illegal? I'm like, really? Yeah. I'm like, there's people doing coke and ecstasy around here. Right, and I'm like, right. decriminalized within it's a year. Yeah, Vegas. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. like, don't be such a bad person. Vegas, man. And I was like, it's not like I'm gonna not buy drinks. Like I'm drunk. Right. Yeah, I'm drunk and tripping on mushrooms. You know, mm -hmm. so like you know, let me get buy more. Yeah, yeah, let me get a couple of Guinnesses and you know maybe a couple of shots of tequila and let's fucking keep this party rolling. Yeah. Nope. <clears throat> and then when I tried arguing with them, they're like, well, just so you know, the cops are downstairs in our parkway or like in our parking area. Whoa. Would you like to talk to them? And I was like, oh, you're just gonna flex that card? I was like, Pff. I was like. Can you at least like throw me off the property? Like at least make it worth yeah, it. Yeah, like, make it cool. I was like, can, can you guys like carry me and just be like, get the fuck out of here? And they're like, can you walk? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, no, we're not carrying you. And I was like, I'm like, can we at least make this epic? Like, come on now. So <laughs> give me something. The uh the the one bouncer told me that I was banned from life forever coming back to the win. And he kind of just said, he goes, look, man. He goes, what most people do is you can write a letter to the win and you can be like, hey. I fucked up, you know, next time I'll throw them out before I get in line, whatever. Yeah. 
And uh, you can ask for them to to take you off the list, but I was just like, eh, I kind of like being banned from there for life. <laughs> it's kind of legendary. <laughs> yeah, good, like, it's kind of cool if you're a big, with a big group. Let's go to win. Ah, I, I can't, man. I, I'm banned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Ah, I want to talk about. Yeah. It, <laughs> totally. Don't look up uh, episode that's eleven like, on my podcast. That's like I'm banned from Uber, and every time I tell someone that, they're like, "What did you fucking do?" Yeah, wait, wait, wait. How no. the fuck do you get banned from Uber? So I got banned from Uber. Listen, I want to tell a story about how I got caught doing cocaine in the back of an Uber or something. Something bad. So it was a hooker. You know? <laughs> so kind of hooker. Anything, right? No, I had lived. I was living in. No, I, was, I think I was living in Dallas. I went to go visit Austin. I think I had a show there, and I fucking. Uh, lost my credit card i left it at the bar i lost it somewhere i don't know where it is and my grandmother has a fucking emergency credit card that she lets me use if i'm in trouble i put the uber on her fucking card and then uh she declined the sales and she went through like the the process of like nope that wasn't my my grandson he wouldn't do that and and i called her i was like hey hey i'm banned from uber like did, did you decline the fucking like like what i what i paid you know or what i what i used your card for and she was like no <laughs> she, she did it, bro she, you need to just tell people you do blow because that story is <laughs> it's kind of gay yeah but like listen your grandmother's card it's hilarious no you just said no no just say you do it just say you do it I was doing blow off my grandmother's card in the back of an Uber. <laughs> and then they opened the window and the <laughs> blow went everywhere. And then my driver got all yeah. fucked up. And... There you go. Come on. Yeah. Make it more legendary. You're right. I'll be better. <laughs> we, we, can re- we can rewrite that for you. Yeah, we can make that. You can edit that somehow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like me, like I don't, I don't do comedy. Like for me, it's just like, well, I got busted with mushrooms. I mean, but in the process leading up to it, it was good times, yeah. you know. Um, but you, on the other hand, like. You're a comic genius. Come on, man. You can <laughs> something better. Yeah. 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 I think the irony is what makes it so funny. It's like a curb your enthusiasm <laughs> episode. Like I I'm a comedian. You just said I'm a comedian. I should have a great story. No, my grandmother just fucking declined the charges. <laughs> and now I'm banned from Uber. Yeah. Like <laughs> We better be extra nice to Lyft now. <laughs> can you, I can am. You Lyft? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uber, man. Some of those fucking drives are assholes in Uber. I think Lyft is better than Uber. You know, like, I think it is. there's some fucking weirdos. Uh, they worry about Lyft. the people in the car. Some of the fucking drivers are questionable. Yeah. For Uber. Shouts out I've to I've had Lyft motherfuckers drivers. saying prayers for me and shit. And I'm like, I just want to go to fucking Waffle House, dude. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, the, the one I hate the most is like, if you're wearing headphones, you get into the Uber and you're like, hey, how's it going? You're obviously wearing your headphones for a reason. You're like, I'm not up for talking. Yeah. And then it's like, hey, how you doing? What are you getting into? You're going to like, the Waffle yeah, and I'm like, bro, you. I'm like, hey, you see yeah. this? Uh, not in the mood. Thanks, man. You, you always get that over, like, over fucking achiever as well. I once got one. I swear to God, it looked like a fucking UFO would landed in the parking lot. He got like lights underneath this shit and fucking Uber flashing. And I get in, he's got a fucking t-shirt on and a hat. That's like happy Uber. I'm like, what the fuck is this? What music one you like? I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I'm drunk. Whatever. What color would you like it back? I'm like, dude, just fucking take me home. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, I understand he's trying to be professional, but fuck, man. It's too far. Yeah. The only reason I'm getting you is because you're fucking $3. You yeah. know, I don't need the smoke and fucking mirror shit with it, you know. And it's the only business where you get upset when they try to go above and beyond. I know, isn't it? Yeah. Any other business. Isn't that weird, oh, actually? Thanks, man. Thank I should have been like, dude, you're kind of a fucking nerd, but well done. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, this is cool. You're trying. Thanks for the water and the gum. Yeah, yeah. And he did. He had a little fucking bag of, you know, sweets and uh, you're going to throw up, do it then, you know. I, like, I always feel weird about that. Honestly, like, if I'm drunk and I get into an Uber, I'm like, just roll the window down. I'm going to stare at the lights. Please don't fucking talk to me. Yeah. Like, thanks for the water. Here's, and when I'm drunk, I'm like, here's a five for like your little pint of water or whatever. But yeah. I'm like, I'm like, dude, I don't want to fucking talk. I, I don't want to fucking talk. I want to hear about your, especially, I don't want to hear about your fucking day. Yeah. Like, you know, no offense. I, I bet you're a nice person. I don't fucking give a fuck. Yeah. I'm really not, yeah. not going to see you again. I'm yeah. here for a service, and that service is you getting me there. Yeah. 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 You know what they should do? They should have a fucking button for Uber or Lyft, and it said, and it goes, would you like your choice of mute? Like, if you hit fucking mute, you don't want to speak to it. 
or her. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little check. Or you say conversation. You fucking check. That's a good idea. Why don't they do that? Why don't they just put it on the Because they're not as smart as me, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, but no, that's a good idea. It really is. My personal I'm, favorite was the fact that like um, I, I I wish I could do like a preferred driver for this because it would be one of those that I would hire this woman to pick me up and drop me off every fucking time. The woman's fucking deaf. So it's not like she's trying to hold a conversation with me. And it was to the point that like I had her enough where like I was in the car. I was like, this is my third time like fucking rolling with this chick that I like literally YouTube how to say thank you in sign language where I was like, I was getting out of the car <laughs> and she was like, I was like, no, no, thank you. <laughs> and she was like, what the fuck? <laughs> He's so speaking my bad. language. That's so mean, dude. Are you mocking me? Dude, you know what? Have you ever seen these fucking, what cracks me up? And I'm not mocking the community, but like, you know when they have, like the governor speaking or someone important and they have the fucking person next to him doing the sign language. <laughs> have you seen that shit? <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's funny how like, they don't just go, they're not just going, they're fucking acting it out as well and they're like, hmm, like sound bad, man. Hmm, you're mad. What the fuck is this? Some of them are really funny. Dude. Like a good bullet. Probably. Yeah, and they're, you know, yeah. they're like, <laughs> what's, that, what's that mean? <laughs> On their resume is a background in improv. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are fucking hilarious. Man. They really like let act it out. Yeah. <laughs> the one that always that kind of, it doesn't weird me out. Like I just question it if it's just going too far. Is they have someone on the side of the stage, like doing the sign language for the song that the band's playing, and I'm like, I don't mean to be a dick, but I'm like, if you're deaf. Why are you at a cut? Yeah. 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 Like, you I'd get the like, like, really. yeah. If you knew what drums sounded like, that's cool. <laughs> 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 You're doing fucking instruments that they've never heard. Yeah. Like, you I mean, do the saxophone like I mean, for a guitar and shit. I, I mean, I guess deaf people like drugs too, right? That's probably why they go to a concert. I mean, know? you can probably feel the vibration, the but, vibrations. but I mean, with a real good sound system, you could play like, you know, Pink Floyd live and, and get the same experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just yeah. you're just tripping at home then. It would kind of suck though to not hear it though. Oh, it would Maybe like suck. <laughs> fucking listening to it in Braille. Oh man, I bet that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> like honestly, you could give that guy like the worst fucking seat ever, and he wouldn't fucking he wouldn't give a shit. No like idea. here, I'll use this as an example. Um, I remember oh, this had to be I had to be nine or ten at the time, so this is thirty some years ago. <clears throat> they had Stevie Wonder when the Detroit Pistons were in the finals. They had him front fucking row. And I'm like, what, what a waste of a ticket. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, you could put that homie in the fucking locker room and he's yeah. just, he don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he's in danger as well, isn't he? You know? yeah. Yeah. If, especially if he sat next to me because I'm not fucking telling him anything. I'm like, <laughs> I want to see this shit. <laughs> Ball comes, bump. What the fuck? <laughs> 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 that shit just hit Stevie Wonder. <laughs> I would totally fucking do that. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't fucking say anything. No, but I got it on fucking YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I would totally do that. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. Um, I was going to wrap up with a couple more questions really quick. Um, I've always wondered this, and I, I never asked you it. Just mostly because I was always like, let's keep drinking. How the fuck did you ever leave Manchester and come to Texas? I, you know, I came over a long time ago. I worked on a camp um, for people with disabilities. And I got a scholarship at a drama school. Mm-hmm. And then I went out, I did that and fucking got married. And Holy shit, dude. did it like that. It was, it was weird how easy it was and how quick it happened, really. You know? Um, and then once I finished school... I was married and I was bartending for a bit. I was doing a flair bartending, the competitions mm-hmm. and shit like that. And then DJed for a little bit. Not like on your level though. Um, and then started doing comedy and shit. And it, it, like I say, that that story with with uh, Chris, Kid from Kid and Play, I'd only been fucking doing comedy six months. Mm-hmm. So I'd, I'd probably emceed twice. That was it, you know. Oh shit! All of a sudden, within six months, I was fucking on the road, like forty-eight weeks of the year. Holy shit! It was fucking insane, dude. 
It was fucking, it was awesome. Look at this overachiever. I know. How long have you been doing it? Uh, but I just got, it was just lucky. I just absolutely right place, right, right fucking time. time. You know, I, I wasn't anything special. But the people that I work with, they were. So, you know, that really fucking helped. I was working with fucking legends. They were showing me good shit. Yeah. So, you know, that was fucking key right there. And that shit rubs off where it's like you see someone that just fucking crushes it and you start making notes of like. What... You, you, yeah, what it does is it gives you, when you see that, when I see Billy D just fucking murder these crowds. And so anything less, I wasn't going to accept. I wanted to get to that, mm -hmm. you know, like Billy's level, which was just fucking unbelievable, you, you know. And Kid, even fucking Chris, you, you know, like all of that, it, you want to get to be that good if that's what you see. You know, if I had to work with people that weren't as consistent, weren't as good, but they, they you know, told me, well, it's like, this is acceptable, then I probably wouldn't have pushed myself to get good. But because I was working with two of the best people in the fucking business, you, you know, then that's all I know. So I've got to fucking get like that to be doing what Billy's doing. Yeah, you're you know? uh, you're you're the starting lineup on yeah. uh, on Man U trying to trying to raise the Fuck trying yeah, to stay dude. stay on bar with everyone else. And, yeah, and stand out I mean you got to do it. And and you know, luckily they helped me and they fucking showed me stuff. And, and we were like best of friends for many many years. We we were fucking tight, you know. We were and we still are very good friends. But when when you know we were touring together, yeah, we were like you know. It was almost like some, the shows were secondary. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like, where are we going this week? I don't fucking know, dude. Just meet me at the airport. Oh, we, yeah, I'm fucking checking. And, you know, we never, we never had to worry about shows being sold out. They were all sold out. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to fucking worry about that. You, you know, and we were going to get VIP to a fucking club or whatever. After, like, we didn't even think about it, plan it. We just knew it was going to be good. I just got really lucky, man. Yeah. Really fucking lucky. I always, I always loved that part when you came to town <clears throat> was the fact that we would get done with those shows and it'd be like, all right, we're done with the shows, sign your autographs, sell all your merch, you're done, cool, get in the fucking SUV, we're going downtown. Yeah. And then we would just party our fucking asses off. Oh, yeah. I was telling the story, I think last week or the week before, where it was one of those that we would go out at 1130 at night, bar closes at 2 a.m. We didn't leave the bar till 4, 430 in the morning. Like the staff would be like... We're kicking everyone out. You guys can stay. You guys are fucking hilarious. And then, like, it'd be Steve telling stories. We'd be fucking binge drinking. Yeah. Do you remember when that stripper, she was pregnant? I didn't know. And she squirted milk in my face. And everyone <laughs> thought it was funny but me. It was fucking horrible. It went in my mouth and everything, dude. She was like, mm. and everyone was watching. Like, they knew it was going to happen. I'm like, Probably tastes better than an ass blister, though. Uh, you are right. You are right. You get a follow up a sprite for Still it. didn't fucking taste good though. I'll tell you, I was just oh, a chaser. Fucking glitter on my lip. <laughs> Dude, she hit him from a couple of feet away. Dude, Dude, she yeah. was like, <laughs> Everyone was watching. I was like, oh, this is so fucking nasty. <laughs> Wait, so I've been trying to remember this if you were there or not. Were you there when we had Steve-O performing for the anniversary party too? No. Um, I did hear about it though. Like he got him and John got into Steve it. Like Steve-O, Steve-O? Like yeah, Steve-O yeah. from Jackass. Yeah. So right. this is this is Steve-O at his, at his peak of like coming out of Jackass and stuff like that. Um, the problem was is this, is that they had told uh, my roommate at the time, Lee and I, Lee was still working there. They told us that they were like, yeah, we're gonna, we hired Steve-O to do the anniversary party and, and Parker's going to DJ and, and whatnot and we'll have Playboy TV there and, and whatnot. And I was like, wait, I was like, Steve-O's kind of a junkie. I was like, if he's not on heroin, he's on something. I go, that's not going to work well. And John tried selling it to us. He's like, oh, he's going to be fine. Like, blah, 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 blah. Like, it's going to be a great time. Like, you should come out with us. I was like, no, I'm going to sit this one out. And he's like, why? I was like, because you're not going to be able to stand him. I was like, and you're going to beat the shit out of him. Yeah. Sure shit. So those guys go out all fucking night long. The dude's dirty. He's grimy when he shows up. And he's just kind of like, like, whatever. Um, at the time we didn't know it, but it come out later that he was, um, what's the CO2 cartridges? Um, he was like whippets or yeah, whippets. Yeah, whippets. Yeah, so yeah. he was doing like a shit ton of whippets and like they did a behind the scenes of his house and his house is just covered in these metal huh. CO2 canisters that are like all over the fucking place. So he had a backpack full of them and he's just ripping those the entire time. And we didn't know what he was tweaked out on. 
So anyway, at some point, he had rubbed Ferraro the wrong way, and John's like, eh, fuck off. Like, I don't want to deal with you anymore. And they kind of just, like, bar time hit, and they were back at the strip club, or back at Silk, excuse me, and everyone just kind of ignored him and thinking he would, like, get in an Uber or get in a cab and, like, fuck off. Well, he ended up getting, like, real antsy and, like, jumped into a waitress's car, and the waitress ran back into the club and was like, he's not getting out of my car. Someone get him out of there. So John's drunk and he goes out there and he's like get the fuck out of her car and steve like tells him to fuck off and closes the door on him well john proceeds to jump into this little fucking vw bug takes full mount fucking just starts beating the shit out of him yeah steve-o fucking slips out jumps out the fucking driver's side door and beelines it down the street so this dude's running down lover's lane has no idea where the fuck he is he's staying downtown and he's on the north side north side of uh of milwaukee trying to figure out where the fuck he's got to go and so, like, the next day, uh, John wakes up, and he was like, oh, fuck, I need to show us. <laughs> <laughs> so, so John's he partner. fucking crazy. Man. <laughs> so John's partner had to smooth everything out. So John's partner, Craig, uh, I, you should meet at some point this weekend if you haven't already. I met him, yeah. We stayed at his house yeah, last yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, he, uh, so he goes downtown to the Fister to go meet up with Steve-O, and steve was there having breakfast, and Craig's just like, oh, I got his meal. And he's like, do you want something to drink, whatever? And uh, and he's like, hey, I heard about the incident, so on and so forth. Because Steve had, Steve-O had said, he's like, I'm not doing this fucking party. You guys can fuck off. Like, I'm already mm-hmm. paid, so eat a dick. Um, so Craig negotiated with him, and I think they milked him for like, uh, Steve-O milked Silk for another 15K to get him to come oh, back and do the God, show. Ridiculous. And the rest, of, so the next, that night now is the party. And the entire night, uh, John had to keep a wire in his ear. So at any time, Steve-O and him were like in proximity of one one another. It would yeah. be one of those where it was like, uh, John, Steve-O's on the move to your office. You need to get the fuck out of your office. And you would just, like, you'd be downstairs doing something. And you'd see Ferraro go running by you, like, yeah. into the comedy club see, or some you shit know, like that. You know what's crazy about that is? Like, I know, like, John had his fucking moments. He was great. But he's also the type of guy that the next day you like, Man, we got fucked up. We're stupid. We're cool, right? And he'd yeah. be like, fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> and then you'd be fine. You know what I mean? But like, it, it had to have been Steve-O that was the dick with that. Because I know John. Like, yeah. John, you know, yeah, he's fucking crazy. But he's also like, man, fuck it. It was Friday. Yeah. You, you know, like, we don't need to, you don't need to carry it on. If if I had 10 bucks for every time that Ferraro and I have beaten the shit out of each other, I'd have 10 grand in the bank. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> he was fucking hilarious, man. He, he did not give a fuck. Yeah. I've been I've been trying to popularize the phrase if I had a Bitcoin for every time. <laughs> like, everyone says if I had a nickel. No, no, no. If I had a Bitcoin for every time. He's I would trying have... to have a fucking T-shirt, and that's <laughs> one of his gimmicks. And I'm like, it's not funny. I told you that. I didn't yeah. know. I told you that. Yeah. I gotta stop drinking with you. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. You're too. You're too in. Maybe about to be three and yeah, three deep in in the in the podcast alone. <laughs> And we did two shots. Yeah. Before we got here. Yeah. Should we? And you guys want to do a shot? I got. I have whiskey and I have scotch. I have this Japanese whiskey I, I that Brandon got. Say no. I don't want to do a shot. You don't want to do a shot? No. Okay. No, it's fine then. Because I don't know what he's got. I don't even know what I'm fucking gonna go back there for. So. Uh, Are you they know gonna, what I mean? They're gonna make you day drink. No, I I don't know what it is. He Twist said something arms. the other day about some. I can't remember what the fuck he said. Did your pants come in? Yeah. Okay. Was, yeah. Was, oh, we still have to record that shit too. I, All right, no worries. All right. Um. Well, listen, we'll get you. Yeah, we're we're getting out. Yeah, I gotta get you guys back. Man, out. I, I hate that we have to go, but this was fucking cool, dude. Yeah. Next time we're up here, we need to do this again. Me. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And and the thing is, you know, you guys want to come and hang out, like if you're off tour and shit like that. Just give me. Get a hold of me. I'll yeah. take the weekend off. We'll go hang out. Diddle if you're in, in Texas. Texas. Oh, that's right. Uh, so Callie and I are going to look at tickets. I'm serious, dude. Come out to Vegas for that. So I got to hit up Matthias from Jägermeister. And like I said, I might do a couple of dates and play out and DJ out there. And I just Fuck don't. Fuck yeah, dude. And then we'll. So the same week is International Fight Week. So that's McGregor versus Poyer. I don't know if we'll be able to get tickets. They're, they're fighting again? Yeah. I didn't even know that. Tickets went on sale and they sold out in like 10 seconds. How long ago was this announced? So the fight was announced, I think, a month ago. I'll tell you this. Oh, if amazing. McGregor does not fucking win, he needs to quit. No, he's not going to quit. I mean, he can still make money, and that's the thing. Got beat by Poirier, right? so uh, yeah. Yeah. Third yeah. 
Yeah, he lost in the second round, but he beat po- he beat Poy- Poyer emphatically when they were one forty five. See, that's the thing. He fucks around with his weight too much, man. I watched it. I watched him in that um, uh, Nate Diaz fight, the second one. Yeah, I watched that again the other day on YouTube, and it was it was interesting. Yeah, you know I mean, he like McGregor won the fight on points. What the fuck? He got tired. He gets tired when he gets tired. You see it. Yeah, you know he, what I mean. He took it's the like, he took the third and fourth round off. Yeah, he got. He just the first. I tell you what, the first two rounds, he was fucking methodical. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was like he was just a different fucking level, and you're like, God damn! But then, once he got fucking tired, he hung on. Yeah, and he won it, and he did win it. But those first two rounds, he looked fucking phenomenal. But then, he, once he started getting tired, and fucking Diaz is a badass. He don't look like a badass. No, uh, but he and, can fucking take a punch like so well. And that's the thing—you're not gonna knock. Yeah, so no, I, I, and I think, yeah, and I think I think McGre- when McGregor was was hitting him with hard shots and realized he wasn't putting him down, yeah, he was tired, so he just took he took two rounds off. Yeah, I remember that fight really well. Um, he took two rounds off, and then in the fifth round was really when he put a, a stamp on everything. Yeah, it was a good fight. It, you could tell that he. I think that that was one that he actually fucking took serious. I know every they, they take them all seriously, but that one, it was. I, I think you know he realized I gotta fucking beat him. Yeah. If he beats me twice, my legacy is shit. Yeah. Like, I have to be the fucking champion and beat him on this next one. I think they're going to do that one again eventually. I think they're going to instead they have to. Man, they did that. They did those two fights at 170. I think they'll do them again at 155. And I think doing it at 155 the the advantage is to McGregor. Absolutely. Um yeah. and I think he I think he wins that fight. But I want to see him fight Poyer again and see how he looks cuz I thought he looked flat-footed, he looked tired, he looked worn down. The other side of that too is is that when it comes to McGregor, um, I think he needs to let I think he needs to let his coaches lead his camp. Yeah. That this last camp they did, he was the one that put it together and he was running everything. I think you need someone that's on your that ass needs to tell you shit and know yeah. shit. Yeah, Instead, because he's got to fight this guy different. I, I mean, he was saying you know the the calf the 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 uh, kicks on his calf muscle on the back of his leg. He was you know he he was like dude. I, he said, I fucking couldn't feel my leg after, you know. That I muscle go, seizes up. Yeah. It's fucking painful. So he's got to kind of fucking change everything to adapt to that. Those are know? hard. Those are hard to read because they're so low. Like yeah. if so from a Muay Thai sense, you, if you see someone kick and you see it's low, you you know, it's either going to the leg or it's going to the body. So right. you can lift the leg up to try and check it or you bring yeah. your arm down to try and cover for the body. But I mean, there's guys that are like sneaky, like Wonder Boy Thompson, where he can just he'll throw a question mark kick. He'll look like he, he'll set you up, where he keeps going leg, 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 and then he stops and he just just goes right up the side of your body, just wallop, yeah, right on the side of the neck. Huh. But yeah, those those calf kicks are so hard to see because they're so fucking low, yeah, um, and they're hard to defend. And it, and even if even if it doesn't hit the calf, if it hits the ankle, that shit fucking it's still gonna hurts. fucking hurt. It hurts. Yeah. It hurts so fucking bad. It, it will be interesting to see like how he overcomes that if he can. You know what his strategy will be for that. I, you know, I mean, I I think it could be a good fight. Yeah. But I also think that, and I was a fan of McGregor. I, I really was. But I think he's on the you know he's on the downside of up now. You know, he's still a badass. He's still a billionaire. Yeah. At, at the end yeah, of the day, that's well, what I was say. he doesn't seem to care anyways. It's like, yeah, hey, he, drink my whiskey, bitches. Yeah. Like, I'm not. But he's gonna win big. He's got to do a couple of fucking big ass wins against people that are fucking worth something. I you know, not people fights. on the way out, or not people that on that. No, I mean, knock a badass motherfucker out, and then, you know, yeah. you're back. Yeah, I respect the fact that like taking Poirier is a fucking second or maybe first in the world, right? In terms of that way, he's, he was the number one contender for the title at the time. Is he gonna fight for the title? Or is no, he so keep that's fighting McGregor, so that's gonna be uh, which is also respectable. That's gonna be Charles Oliveira and um, Michael Chandler. They're gonna be fighting yeah. for the one fifty five title. So there was an option that Poirier had. He could either fight for the belt, and I think he would have fought Chandler or. The, either the winner of the uh, Chandler Oliveira fight, or he would have fought one of those two guys for the title, or he had the option to fight McGregor, and he took the option to fight McGregor. To that's money. fucking cool. You yeah. know what I mean? And and that's what I respect about McGregor too. He's like you said, he's on his way out, but he's still fighting Mayweather in, in boxing. It's a totally different sport. Oh, he ain't scared. He's fighting. He yeah, he'll scared. he'll take a fight. I mean, 
anybody who was afraid of their legacy wouldn't take another Poirier fight. Right. Because that dude's still at the top yeah. of his fucking... Well, the, the tough part for but McGregor... But he still takes it. For the, the tough part about McGregor is the fact that he fought the uh, the Mayweather fight, and then he fought Diaz, and then he just he took a bunch of time off. And it's not like the UFC were like, hey, you're going to get a tune-up fight. They gave him Cowboy Cerrone, yeah. who at the time was just fucking guys up. And he made him look like he didn't belong in the top five whatsoever. And then he had another year off again because mm-hmm. of COVID and shit because like that. And then you come out and your first your first fucking fight is you're going to fight the number one contender for the title. Yeah. Like that's... He shouldn't have taken that. Well, well it's kind of cool that he did. But right? I mean, that's that's the thing is that, you know, he's not he's not trying to fight anyone below him. He's literally just going, he's aiming at the top 1% of whether it's the 55 or 70 division. And just going, ah, let's see what fucking happens. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, kudos to him for even having the balls, because a lot of yeah, a lot of guys, I, that... a lot of guys will duck those fights, and they'll just be like, Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. yeah. Fucking last fifteen fights he fucking had was a dodge. Easy. Uh, yeah. He's one of the hard. See, the in boxing, he's fights. dude. He's the hardest guy to fucking hit, and then he's supposed to be fighting he's the hardest guy to get a fight with as well. Sugar, <laughs> dude, Shane, Sugar Shane Mosley was his last really good fight, and then everything after that was yeah. I'm done. I just want to make. Yeah, I mean, defensive. I, you know what? What a lot of people never fucking realize about Floyd. Everyone said, you know, he's a defensive boxer. Right, we get it, and he was, and he was fucking great at it. He also had one hell of a fucking chin. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like he never got hit. There were fucking times that he got racked, and this motherfucker didn't. It didn't even phase him. Yeah. And I think a lot of people didn't understand that. That like, you know, if you're a boxer, you're gonna get fucking hit. And there's a lot of fights that he get walloped. But he just had a great fucking chin. And boom, and then he'd defend on it. And and like a lot of people don't understand that. That he could take a fucking punch, man. Yeah. The only time I t- saw him get like rocked bad was uh that fucking Argentinian uh, Madonna. Um fuck, I can't remember his name. I should have pulled this up. But he it was at the end of it was, at, it was like end of seventh round or something. This fucking dude smacks him and the bell goes. And his leg, like you see fucking Mayweather's leg, like go this way and it should have gone that way. You're like, oh fuck, man. He just like got through on him. But yeah, he still ended up winning the fucking fight. But he had a, Mayweather had a fucking great chin. And nobody. Neil Alvarez, right? It was like his second to last fight. Yeah. I mean, that guy, we all thought he was going to be the best fighter in history and he still got beat, you know. Yeah. Uh, Maidana, yeah, the Argentinian Marcus. Maidana, that was. Well, I think he fought him twice. Didn't yeah, he, he did. Uh, and then on the, the first one is where he got fucking clocked. I, I I'm not sure if it was the seventh, but it was around then. It was right at the end of the fucking bell, and he got hit, and you saw that he was hurt. But you know, they both had their hands down, but you, but you saw his leg go that way, and I was like, yeah. fuck me, I'd never seen that before. Yeah, yeah, you know, his but leg then, stiffened up. Yeah, after that, he was fine, you know, but that Argentinian guy, he was a fucking hard bastard, man, like... You know, you look at who he fought, he fought Cotto, he fought Alvarez before that, fought Mosley, like, he's got a who's who, he fought fucking, dude, he fought De La Hoya on Cinco de Mayo, I remember that one, dude. <laughs> Like who the fuck and like he I think he came out with a sombrero and shit like that. <laughs> it's just that shit was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's fought he's fought everybody, man. God damn. He's supposed to be fighting uh not Jake Paul. I think Logan Paul is the other one. So the uh so my I don't even know if he still trains at our gym or not, because he didn't train at our gym for this fight. He just had guys come in and, and work with him. Ben Askren's fighting Jake Paul tonight. And I think Logan Paul's supposed to be fighting uh, Mayweather, but I don't know when the hell that fight's supposed to happen. Maybe, yeah. I mean, honestly, if I were Mayweather, I'd be like, nah, fuck it, I'm done, yeah, dude. Yeah, 50's such a nice, even number. Just leave. Yeah. 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 I mean, what's he got to prove, man? Well, he went over... That was the weird thing, too. He like He went over to Japan and did an MMA match, but it was, like, no kicking. And then, like, he fought, he fought a kickboxer who was insanely tough. And he was just like, yeah, you can't kick or anything like that. And it was supposed to be like an MMA fight. Right. And he fuck, he knocked him out in like the second round and yeah, shit like that. You can't. I don't know. I mean, he's, he's, play a different sport. Yeah. he's getting old. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he's fucking bored. Maybe I mean, here's the thing, man. If someone's paying you, 
fuck it. And the amount of money they pay him to, to show up, there was, I mean, there was a point where he was the highest paid athlete for like, I think, four or five years in a row. By like, like 600%. Dude. Yeah. Like, second place was but, like but Tiger Woods. Thing, yeah. Tiger, thing, and Tiger, Tiger, Tiger Woods is making like 100 million a year. Yeah. And Mayweather is making three times his money. Yeah. But, but here's the thing, though, right? To have that 50 and 0 record in boxing that's been around so fucking long, and there's so many greats and so many fucking stories, and, like, and, and to be the only motherfucker to do that, to walk away from that, and you risk it. Now, as you as you're on your way out, yeah, fifty one. Why? Why fifty fucking Don't one? Do Walk it. away. Don't do it. You dude. had fifty and zero. Yeah. Just, do you know how sexy fifty and zero sounds? Why would you make it fifty and one? Yeah. Like it fucks it all up. Yeah. You know it, the amount of money it would take. I mean, that's. I, you, you're fucking dollars. stupid if you're yeah. gonna. Yeah, I would be like, like if they told me if they said me, you're fifty and zero, we'll give you ten million to fire a retard. One arm, <laughs> right? Uh, I still got no. Why? In case he's got fucking retard strength and he beats me up, but <laughs> knocks me the fuck out, exactly. whatever, dude. I want to keep my record, man. <laughs> he's blind. I don't give a fuck. I'm not doing it. No, fifty and fucking oh in boxing. Yeah, shit. Yeah, call it a day. Nobody should. Yeah, he's learn how to read. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. He's like, you know, I take that fifty challenge. He's like, I'll give you a quarter million dollars if you can read one page of a Harry Potter book. That was the most cold blooded shit. Fifty cent, right? Yeah. It was Curtis Jackson that said that. That's so rude. That was the most cold blooded. You take all that money. He's like, I'll give you a quarter million if you can read one page of a Harry Potter book. Oh God damn! Listen, um, I'm gonna wrap this up so you guys can get back out yes, and and go hang out, um, out in. Uh, Oconomowoc. Listen, uh, folks, for those of you that are, that are watching this live, uh, a couple of things was again, you can catch uh, Matt and you can catch Steve tonight out at the Hideaway out in Oconomowoc. Uh, show is at 8 o'clock. Also, uh, if, if you're not able to catch that and you're trying to catch the Jake Paul Ben Askren fight, you can do that tonight at Uncle Buck's for their viewing party. It will be he held in the Red Star. $10 cover. Seating is, a, is limited, so first come, first serve. Show up early. Uh, they'll have Miller and White Claw bucket deals all night long, preferred seating uh, with any bottle deals. So once again, that's it. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, next week, we will actually we push DJ Erich from tomorrow to, uh, to next week, Sunday, and we're going to have him on board. And then I think we're actually, I think I convinced Ferraro and Lee to do a podcast together oh, no for, for May. And Ferraro was just like, he, he had his, he has his, ten, his hand, is, he's, he's holding back on, on agreeing to it. And I was like, look, dude, I was like, you've already been canceled. I was like, so fuck yeah, it. Right. Got nothing else left to lose. <laughs> uh, so once again, everyone, thank you for tuning in to the Zero Cool Podcast. Like, subscribe. Once again, everyone, thank you for tuning in. Mahalo. That was good, man.